Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology. We are doing WBC disorders from Medium Robbins and today's topic is going to be reactive leukocytosis. So, first of all, let's understand this word. Look, leukocytosis means that the WBC count will be, let me ask you, uh, they will be increased or decreased. You know this is increased because it is cytosis. Cytosis means increase in the number. If the WBC count is decreased, that condition is called leukopenia. There we are talking about leukocytes. So the WBC count will be increased. That's one thing. The other thing, this is reactive. Reactive ka matlab ye hai, this is secondary to something. This is in reaction to something. Dekhen, isko aise samjhe, ki this is a person, it's a very cool and calm person, never angry on anyone. But sometimes if somebody, you know, says bad things to this person, now this person can become angry as well. But that is reactive angry behavior because the person is not primarily reactively um, angry uh, by himself or herself primary uska behavior ye nahi hai. if you incite the person if you you know stimulate the person to be angry the person can be angry this is called reactive behavior bilkul isi tarah leukocytosis mein if the wbcs are increasing number secondary to something reactive to something then this is called reactive leukocytosis or was something kya hoga? Was something basically infection hoga, right? in most of the cases for example if there is a bacterial invasion in the body the wbc's count will go up this is called reactive leukocytosis okay so increase in the number of wbc's in the blood is common in a variety of inflammatory states which are caused by either infection or sometimes also non-infectious stuff. So WBCs hamisha aisa nahi hai ke uh, infection mein hi badhenge. It's not like this, okay? There are some non-infectious causes as well and we will talk about them. Leukocytoses are relatively non-specific and they are classified according to the particular white cell series which is affected. So say for example, if neutrophils are increased in number, this is called neutrophilic leukocytosis. Agar eosinophils number mein badhte hai, this is called eosinophilic leukocytosis ya neutrophilia. Similarly, basophilia, if only basophils are increased. Monocytes, agar aapke uh, macrophages, uh, these cells which are called monocytes, monocyte macrophage system. If those cells are increased in number, it's monocytosis. And if T and B cells are increased in number, it's called lymphocytosis. So, word leukocytosis ke kafi sare subclassifications hai. Agar ek cell ki type badi huye, to usi ke naam par us leukocytosis ko naam dete hai. Or in ke apni apni causes bhi hai. So, if you look at this, uh, neutrophils are increased in number, usually if you have acute bacterial infections or if there are you know tissue necrosis or sterile inflammation such as what happens in burns and mi okay eosinophils are usually increase in number if the person is suffering from asthma or allergic disorders or parasitic infections or also in some cancers and collagen vascular diseases this is very important because see as a doctor if you are looking at a cbc report agar aap cbc ki report dekh rahe hain aur usme aap dekh rahe hain ki janab eosinophil out of the proportion badhe hue hain now you need to look at the cause aur isi tarah aap us cbc ki report se lekar diagnosis tak pahunchenge hai na basophils are usually increase in number because of some myeloproliferative disorders such as CML. Monocytes in chronic infections such as TB, sarcoidosis or inflammatory chronic problem, monocytosis. And lymphocytosis can be again because of chronic inflammatory conditions, tuberculosis, brucellosis, sarcoidosis. This table is super important for your examination purposes but also for your clinical purposes. Because in clinics, when you see patients, then patients when you come to you, obviously infection, hoga, fever, you will do CBC, there will be a particular cell type in CBC. You will start making an idea from here that my list of differential diagnoses is what So please pay attention to this table, okay? Right. Now, I will tell you that this is damn important that if neutrophil is then think about bacterial infection and if eosinophil is then think about parasites and allergy and asthma and all these sort of things, okay? Right, right, right. Let's move on to the next one. This table you have to spend time on this table, time spent karna, okay? As discussed later, in some cases, reactive leukocytosis may mimic leukemias. Leukemia is a malignant condition, but reactive leukocytosis is not. Reactive leukocytosis may be a number of WBCs badhe hoon hai, and sometimes it may look like leukemia, but uh, isko hum ek se naam dete we call it leukemoid reaction. Oid ka matlab hota hai, us jaisa, jaisa android hai, human jaisa, uh, leukemoid hai, leukemoid means leukemia jaisa, okay? It's not leukemia, but it's leukemia jaisa. 
Infectious mononucleosis merits a separate consideration because it gives rise to distinctive syndrome associated with lymphocytosis. So let's talk about infectious mononucleosis very, very separately. It's an acute self-limited disease of adolescent, usually, and young adults, and it is caused by a virus which is Epstein-Barr virus. It's a member of herpes family of viruses, and the infection is characterized by fever, sore throat, and generalized lymphadenitis. So something just like uh, sore throat, na? fever, hua, sore throat, hua. and there is lymphocytosis of uh, CD8 positive cells. So particularly T cell burn hai, or CD8 positive T cells burn. Hai. Of note, cytomegalovirus infection induces a similar syndrome that can be differentiated only by serologic methods. So this Epstein-Barr virus se cause ho hai, but cytomegalovirus can cause the similar stuff. EBV is ubiquitous in all human populations, is widely present. Katenji, more than 90% of the people are infected with EBV. In this developed world, EBV infection in early childhood is nearly universal. Sab koi hota bhai. Uh, transmitted via kissing and saliva and body secretion, so it's very common. Even though infected children mount an immune response, most remain asymptomatic yeah, mild symptoms and more than half continue to shed virus usually for life. So we are <laughs> EBV spreaders. Uh, by contrast, in developed countries with better standards of hygiene, infection typically is delayed until adolescence because it is transferred by kissing, I told you. For unclear reasons, only about 20% of healthy seropositive persons in developed countries shed the virus and only about 50% of those um, are actually um, you know, uh, infected, jo exposed. Ho hai. So, point sara ye hai isme, ki you need to understand that Epstein-Barr virus infects almost everybody. And... Uh, Initial infection, per there is a mild increase of uh, uh, CD8 positive cells, sometimes mild symptoms, sometimes severe symptoms, but then we continue to shed the viruses. Okay, transmission of zero negative kissing cousin usually involves direct oral contact. It is hypothesized that the virus initially infects the oropharyngeal epithelium and then spreads to the underlying lymphoid tissue where mature B-cells are infected. The infection of the B-cells takes one of the two forms. In minority of the cells, the infection in is lytic, leading to viral replication. More commonly, it enters into a latent form. So basically, this virus is keep pathogenesis spread. So it enters via the oral route, kissing route, very common. I have told you word use kar raho. So it enters via the saliva into the oropharyngeal area and there are B-cells. And B-cells have virus infection. Karta hai, and then the B cells may a virus it persists for the rest of your life. This is called the latent phase of the virus. Okay, now B cells that are latently infected with Epstein Barr virus become activated and proliferate as a result of action of several viral proteins. These cells disseminate in circulation and secrete antibodies with unusual specificities, including antibodies that recognize the sheep red cells that are detected in the diagnostic test for mononucleosis. Is not important for you, so don't worry about this. Okay, the host T cell response controls the proliferation of the EBV infected B cells and the spread of the virus. Now, early in the course of infection, IgM antibodies are formed against the viral capsid. Konsa virus? EBV. Later, the serologic response to IgG antibodies switch ho jata hai. Yamko pata hai ki jab kabhi ko viral infection ho hai. Initially, there are IgM antibodies which are made, then we shift to IgG antibodies, right? Doesn't matter. Ye baat hume malum hai. Now, later on, what is happening? Ke wo B cells, jinko EBV ne infect hiya hai, Epstein Barr virus ne, they are controlled basically by the cytotoxic T cells, okay? Uh, abhi itna yad rakhe hai, baki se yad details hamne microbiology mein karni hai. So, um, suddenly, what we are talking about is reactive leukocytosis. Or is leukocytosis mein jo generalized baat hamne samjhi wo ye, ki increase in the WBC count. Or uski baat sari condition ho sakti hai. Agar neutrophil hai, to ye vazaya ho sakti hai, eusinophil ye. But remember, hamne specific time spent kiya hai, um, for understanding the infectious mononucleosis because that's an acute infection caused usually by Epstein-Barr virus. It's been a lot time in this book because this is a universal infection. If there is an infection, you need to know its pathogenesis. Okay? Clinically, infectious mononucleosis classically manifests as fever, sore throat, and lymphadenitis, but atypical presentations are not unusual. So, it means that extra patient has infection and they don't know. Sometimes there is little or no fever, only um, some fatigue, 
लिम्फेडिनोपैथी और समटाइम्स यू कॉल इट फीवर ऑफ अनोन ओरिजन तो पता ही नहीं चलता कि पेशेंट को मसला क्या है राइट समटाइम्स कोई एक रैश होता है रुबेला की तरह का अल्टीमेटली द डायग्नोसिस डिपेंड्स अपॉन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द ए टिपिकल लिम्फोसाइट्स इन द पैरिफ्रल ब्रस में यू डू द ब्लड स्क्रीन पॉजिटिव हेट्रोफिल रिएक्शन विच इज द मोनोस्पॉट टेस्ट वेयर यू आइडेंटिफाई द एंटीबॉडीज एंड आर राइजिंग टाइटर ऑफ द एंटीबॉडी विच आर स्पेसिफिक्स फॉर आई बी सो यू डू द सीरोलॉजी एंड आइडेंटिफाई के बंदे को इन्फेक्शस मोनोन्यूक्लियोसिस है ओकेजनली वन और मोर कॉम्प्लिकेशन सुपरवेन पर हैप्स द मोस्ट कॉमन ऑफ दीज इज द हेपैरिक डिसफंक्शन associated with joint days elevated liver enzyme but this is rare does not happen all the time okay other complications involve nervous system involvement kidneys bone marrow but again these are very very rare ebv is a potent transforming virus that plays a role in pathogenesis of number of human malignancies thus this is why this is important we are being infected with a virus jo uh, i mean typically b cells ko infect kar raha बट ये इन्वॉल्व है बहुत सारी मेलेग्नेंसीज में सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज इट इज इन्फेक्टिंग द बी सेल द फर्स्ट सेल यू शुड थिंक अबाउट इज द बी सेल लिम्फोमा ओके यानी बी सेल्स गो बॉन्कर एंड दे प्रोलीफ्रेड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द ए बी बी इन्फेक्शन दे ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू मेलेग्नेट सेल सो बी सेल लिम्फोमाज आर कॉमन a serious complication in those lacking the t cell immunity is unimpeded ए बी बी ड्रिविन बी सेल प्रोलीफ्रेशन एंड दिस इज वाई लिम्फोमा हैपन्स ओके the importance of cellular import, immune response in controlling ebv infection is also uh, driven home by x-linked lymphoproliferative syndrome xlp a rare inherited immunodeficiency characterized by an ineffective response to ebv um but maybe you don't even even if you don't remember you're fine there are some uh, percentage of population a small number jin mein uh, ebv mein aap hoga ki har ek ko infect kar raha hai so ebv infection ko hum handle karte hain na hamare b cells infect hote hain and then the t cells control it ki ye zyada proliferate na kare b cells jin mein ebv genome maujood hai baaz log isko handle nahi kar pate sahi se and that is the known as the uh, xlp syndrome okay most affected boys they have mutation identified in sh2 d1a gene which encodes a signaling protein that participates in the activation of t cells and natural killer cells so basically the idea is ke ebv infects the b cell and now this b cell is dangerous because it contains ebv genome now we have t cells and natural killer cells looking on this b cell ke ye ko garbad na kare agar aapko in b uh, cell ko control karne wale jo factors hain yani t or nk cells in ki control system mein koi uh, problem hai koi defect hai then the person may have more chances of developing lymphoma so this is and one of the factor which controls t and nk cell is ss Uh, 2 d1a gene okay is too much of information for you but it's worth remembering because sometimes they have asked this in examinations okay so in leukocytosis whenever you see increased wbc count the first question you should ask yourself is this tumor or is this non tumor and uh, you there are different tools by which you can actually identify this patient ki history patient ka examination laboratory test and once you identify that this is non tumor then you are thinking about reactive leukocytosis reactive leukocytosis ke sare causes aapko pata hone chahiye infectious mononucleosis special attention aapko pata hona chahiye okay now the major alteration involved in the blood so this is not actually too important at the moment there will be uh, enlarged spleen uh because obviously if there are more proliferating lymphocytes they have to be destroyed somewhere so that's an easy text i'll read it for you the major alteration involved the blood lymph nodes spleen liver and occasionally other organs there is peripheral blood leukocytosis the white cell count is usually 1200 and 1800 cells is big number typically more than half of these are lymphocytes atypical hum infectious mononucleosis ki baat kar rahe hain obviously this is lymphocytosis okay lymph node enlargement hogi there will be lymphadenopathy and on histological examination agar aap lymph node ko kaat ke microscope mein dekhte hain so you see atypical lymphocytes and uh, they occupy the paracortical areas the t cell areas a few uh, may also resemble the redistant buck cell which is the hallmark for hodgkin lymphoma if you remember spleen is also enlarged in most of the cases weighing between 300 and 500 grams and it exhibit heavy infiltration of atypical lymphocytes so more lymphocytes everywhere basically okay so uh, they are also present in liver atypical lymphocytes also infiltrate in the portal areas of the liver right so that's basically all about reactive leukocytosis so leukocytosis mein humne different causes yaad rakhna main bar bar keh raha hu bhai ye table bada zaruri hai theek hai now after this we are going to spend a uh, specific time in the next video on reactive lymph adenitis very important topic so stay tuned for this one ab tak humne baat ki ek video we talked about leukopenia jab cells kam hote hain 
नाउ वी टॉक्ट अबाउट ल्यूकोसाइटोसिस जब डब्ल्यू बी सी ज्यादा हो जाते हैं एंड द नेक्स्ट टाइम वील टॉक अबाउट लिम्फ एडी नाइटस जिसमें लिम्फ नोट की इन्फ्लमेशन की बात करेंगे सो ऑल द बेस्ट इफ यू लाइक द वीडियो प्लीज शेयर विद योर कॉलिग सब्सक्राइब द चैनल माई नेम इज प्रोफेसर आसिफ रशी एंड यू आर वॉचिंग डॉक्टर आसिफ लेक्चर्स